Hi there. I think I might just kick off. Um, hopefully I see we've got um, a number of participants and maybe just introduce myself and uh, our guest today, Patrick Mosey. Um, I'm uh, Karen Anderson. I'm an architect by training and practice. And um, I'm also an advocate for um, best practice in terms of public engagement on design and architecture. And um, it's a really great pleasure to introduce Patrick, um, who is a, a man of many talents. He's an art historian, a writer, a translator, a publisher, and a museologist who has um, brought to life um, the museum um, at Le Lac, Le Corbusier Museum in Corso, Switzerland, through, uh, throughout all the ranges and strands of his work. Um, I think today you're going to be inspired by hearing about that and um, I'm hoping that we will all learn about how we can connect and make culture and design much more accessible and much more enjoyable. A key theme being around a place um, and of course the museum is a very important and special place in global terms but it also has a place in the locale. So without any more ado, um, I'd maybe like to to uh, introduce Patrick and ask him if you would uh, maybe give us some background about how he came to Lilac and um, his, his seminal um, influence in making the museum so engaging. Yes, um, hello everybody. Thank you for your invitation. Um, may, maybe I, I show you first a picture of the place we're talking about, Villa Lilac, this is it. Um, I hope you can see this. Uh, so this is um, a small 64 square meters house built by the architect Le Corbusier for his parents in 1923. And uh, this is on the shores of Lake Geneva in Corzo, close to Montreux, very well known Montreux. Everybody knows Montreux uh, for the deep purple uh, song, Smoke on the Water, that uh, was born there in the Montreux Jazz Festival. Um, anyway, this is 1923. And what comes just... Uh, before is this one. This is the first house that Le Corbusier built for his parents in La Chaux-de-Fonds, 1912. So you can see the giant leap between this modernist architecture and this uh, more classical, yet very interesting as well uh, for many, many uh, modernist feature to come as well. And after Villa Le Lac, 1923, you have Le Corbusier's masterpiece, Villa Savoie, 1928. So to make it very short, we could say that Villa Le Lac is the draft for this masterpiece. You have to know that it's the first time that a building became a listed building, a historical monument, while the architect was still alive. Uh, this was in 1965, so the year uh, Le Corbusier died. So, and um, now I came to your, I, I come to your question, how I I, um, I landed there. It's completely by chance because um, I needed um, six months experience in the um, local community, like uh, the Commune de Corzo. And uh, because I applied at the moment in New York. So I needed this six months experience. So I applied uh, they were looking for an old lady to open a door on Wednesday afternoon, and um, I applied. And they told me, of course, uh, they don't need me. They don't need a historian of art just to open a door. And um, I told them that I would pay for the ad in six months if they give me my chance. And then I fly to to New York. But in the meantime, I've discovered this amazing place and this little a uh, jewel of uh, functionalism, ingenuity. And uh, now it's 22 years, I'm still there because uh, in, it, it's so interesting and there are so many things to do that in fact, we're just at the beginning. Um, what, what's interesting with this house is when I started, this was 1999, uh, people in the in the in the village and um, especially people in the town hall wanted to get rid of the house. They told that we should get rid of the house to make a parking, a few parking spaces for the swimming pool. This two hundred meters uh, on the east side, and uh, now it's a UNESCO listed building. So it's it's quite interesting to see how things can 
evolve. Absolutely. I, I think um, the, the, the point being that so many people uh, might not have seen that opportunity and therefore grown it. And I think that's got a lot of resonance um, with the, the design stories chat intent, which is really to inspire people to do something more with their heritage and to, well, make, make the absolute most of every opportunity. It's a, it's a fantastically inspiring story. Um, I should say, please, uh, folks, do put um, questions in in the in the chat in the question and answer section, and please feel free to use the chat as we go along. It's quite an informal session, and um, we'd love to get you involved as required as you can. Um, again, moving from that, uh, Patrick, um, you 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 found yourself there, and. Um, it was, there was a, a story about how you then used the museum as, as, a, as a platform for, for linked development of the place and the space, but also um, the curation of, of exhibitions and, and publications. So again, it'd be good to, to learn of your approach to that as you, as you worked on that opportunity. Yes. Uh, I. I found some pictures, some black and white picture of the 60s. Um, in the 60s, the brother of Le Corbusier lived in the house and he was also a musician teaching music to young people um, of, of the place. And I found this picture so interesting. I show you one just to show you um, the type of documents I found. Um, just a second. Yeah, this is the place uh, as it is now, the garden. And I found a picture like this. This is 1964. So of course, um, you, can, you can see the whole romantic thing about this kind of picture. And this is a picture by Erling Mandelman, who was a young Danish photographer who came to, to, the, to, to Vebet, to this region, uh, for only six months for... Um, uh, a course in the photographic school in Vevey. And uh, I got in contact with Mr. Mandelman and he told me the whole story, how he came to Villa Le Lac in 1964-65 when Albert Jeanneret, Le Corbusier's brother, lived there. And um, he made a lot of pictures and he showed them to me and I found that amazing. This answers exactly the question many people were asking, how? was it when it was uh, lived in? How was it when people lived in the house? Because nowadays it looks like this. This is an exhibition we have now, right now at the, at the villa. And uh, of course, when you find pictures uh, when the father, mother, brother lived there, you can see how people lived in such a modernist house. Of course, this is very interesting. So I had the idea to, show them to the public and uh, why not create a museum uh, at that place. So I returned to university for a PhD in museology and uh, I, my, my, um, my PhD was about the transforming, the changing of a house for living in, in a house for exhibiting, that's a museum. And um, this then uh, was, uh, it, then it needed 10 years to get everyone agree on this project, uh, the owner, the local community and so on. And after, 10 years after, in 2010, the museum started. So we started with an exhibition of the pictures of Mr. Mandelman. Next, the, the, in 2011, we had a beautiful exhibition with uh, René Burry, uh, who was a photographer for Le Corbusier, who went with Le Corbusier on his construction site, and so on, and so on, and so on. And uh, now we are preparing our 10th exhibition um, for 2023, which will be the 100th birthday of, uh, of the house. And uh, it was quite ironic. Uh, the museum was created in 2010, and I discovered in 2013 a letter by Le Corbusier um, in 1965, a few a few weeks before he dies, he writes to the chief of um, um, urbanism in Lausanne, and 
he tells him that he would like to create a little museum in Villa de Lac. So it's quite amazing to get this um, um, acknowledgement from Le Corbusier himself uh, three years after the museum was, was made. Amazing, actually. Um, you know, that that um, resource, which is correspondence, I, I was picking up um, from some of your publications, and you'll forgive me because the pronunciation is probably wrong, but it, it was an exhibition of paintings um, based on the letters from, from the house um, by, is it Florence Cosnefroy? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Tell me how to pronounce yes. it. <laughs> as you said <laughs> and so I mean it's lovely that you 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 translate you know old letters into mm -hmm. you know a current exhibition of painting and color in the house mm -hmm. that just was inspirational yeah it's um so so every every letter in fact uh, uh Florence chose letters in the um, letters from Le Corbusier to his uh, family living in the house. And every time that they were talking about the villa and about the color, she linked the letter with the color. So we have several colors um, and letters talking about the letters. It's chronological from 1923 to 1965. And uh, this of course is very interesting because it shows you again how people lived in this house. And here you discover how they loved the house in summer because you can imagine with the lake it's absolutely beautiful and how it was a bit more difficult in winter because it was very difficult to heat yeah absolutely but it's that idea that the house is not static the house is is an interpretation of of the life and, and it moves on i think that again is the is the unique quality that your curation and publications have given it um i suppose also, just thinking about that theme of, of curation, you've also um, brought um, architecture from the locale um, in the form of the houses uh, to, I think, again, is that um, a villa and its legacy? Uh, and, and again, that's bringing in design within, within the, the wider um, area of the house to, to the museum to make it engaging and living for, for visitors. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. And and the uh, the the Bel Air to Babel as well. I was quite interested in that because that's looking again <laughs> um, at towers, whereas the houses is looking at Corb's themes of of, um, of house design and how that's translated into modern architecture. But the towers um, is 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 a much more global um, prospect in terms of. Uh, you're just wondering how you how you how you decide what what you're going to curate and what you're going to publish yeah it's um in fact at villa de lac it's quite easy uh the deal with the owner is uh the exhibitions we present at villa de lac must have a link with villa de lac with le corbusier or modern architecture so um the towers we have here uh, it's an exhibition it was in 2019 an exhibition about the five um projects or nearly built projects um of high rises skyscrapers, towers, mm -hmm. simply because Le Corbusier also wanted to build um, uh, high rises, but he never did. It never succeeded. And uh, you have some examples, beautiful examples here. This would have been in Lausanne. Can you imagine this? I, don't, I hope you can see it. Yes, this is a, a, a 270 meter tower in Lausanne, never been. This, this is a project by Jean Choumi. Jean Choumi is the architect who made the Nestle headquarters just here, a few meters from Villa de Lac here in Vevey. And this was never built. And then there are several other buildings. One was built, it's the famous Tour d'Ivoire in Montreux. Um, and this of course, as you, you are in Switzerland, people here, uh, we have no tradition of these high rises. And uh, this tower in Montreux uh, was really not um, liked by the, um, by, by, by the locals. Uh, it has even been uh, awarded the worst note in, as a listed building. Nowadays, it changed to a grade two listed building. So of course, it, it changes uh, after, after 50 years, things change. So this was um, 
uh, something interesting to be linked with Corbusier because he himself imagined towers in Alger, mm -hmm. um, and he, which he never, never did. Um, then there are other exhibitions like this one. Um, this was for the 50th anniversary of Le Corbusier's death. We invited these architects, stars of architecture, and we proposed them to imagine an extension to Villa Le Lac, which is of course a, a project of imagination. We wouldn't build anything. You, you're not allowed to hammer in a nail in a, in, a, in a wall at Villa Le Lac. So we don't touch anything, but it was interesting to make this uh, competition of imagination and propose to Le Corbusier's nowadays pairs, peers, um, what they would imagine as, um, as an extension. I think the thing is, um, you know, you have, it's such a rich um, sort of field to actually pull ideas from and to, and to get, um, you know, imagination for engagement. Um, I know um, that you've you, you've got wide audiences, um, and some of them are global and some of them are local. And um, so perhaps it'd be it'd be good if you could talk a little about how how you approach each, um, and how each approach you actually is probably as interesting. Yeah, uh, you see, Villa de Lac is so small that we can have a personalized uh, welcome for everyone. We can. Um, Excuse me, this is just the cat that is. <laughs> this is the cat who is making some noise. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, the, um, the, when, when, we, when we receive architects who already know about Villa Le Lac, we can talk uh, from. To, to, to a specialist, for example, and we can talk about the concrete, we can talk about the. Uh, uh, how how the, the how the house was built um, when we have visitors who know who don't know anything about the house um, we can talk about the inhabitants about the piano lessons of Le Corbusier's mother of or the musical lessons of Albert it, it's it's so wide that we find something for everyone and as it's so small uh, we can talk with everyone um, in peculiar. And what people like also is once they've spent some time at the villa, we offer them uh, some tea with, the, with mint from the garden or verbena or what, chamomile or whatever. So this is the little, little plus uh, of, for their visit. Again, um, you mentioned, I think, I, I caught a picture of it earlier, and some of the uh, other um, sort of devices you've used um, to engage not just people with the building. <laughs> I don't know if you'd like to share that one. I thought that was... Yes, uh, <laughs> I, I show you, I show you this. Um, just a second. Uh, yeah. Where is it? Yeah. Here. So um, this, you have to imagine, this is in the garden. When, when the house was built, you had no road, just pedestrian path along the, um, the house and the hedge. So the, the mother of Le Corbusier had a dog and a fox terrier, and he could crawl under the hedge and bark at the people on the, um, on the path. 1931 comes the road. So Le Corbusier builds a wall to protect the inhabitants from the fury of vehicles, as he calls it. And of course, the dog loses his hobby. So in order to let the dog practice, it, Le Corbusier imagined these two steps, this window with bars. Uh, this is just at the level of the ankles of the um, passerby. And so the dog can bark at the people on the sidewalk. So it's a very interesting um, um, device because it shows how Le Corbusier imagined the whole thing. He, he really cares about people who live in the site, uh, father, mother, then the dog. And he does something for, for everyone. And of course, the site is not, um, you, you cannot come to visit the site with your dog. 
of course. But we make, of course, an exception when people know about the device and they say, oh, I know there is the uh, uh, dog's device. Could I come with my dog and make a picture uh, of my dog on the steps? Of course. So we have here many, many photos of the dogs on the steps. And this also leads us to imagine, to, to imagine um, uh, an amazing doggy fair or a beauty conquest or something like this. Um, at the villa. This is interesting also to attract uh, people to the place because what's very interesting, people think that it's that Villa Le Lac is something that is not for them. It's something uh, for an elite or whatever. And it's completely wrong. It's for everyone. It's a house. Everybody needs a house. Everybody lives in a house, should be able to live in a house. And uh, this is absolutely for, for every man, every woman. And uh, this kind of anecdotes, this kind of um, conquests we could make would attract uh, also people to discover the house and discover that the place is indeed for them as well. It's a very latch into, into storytelling, really, isn't it? It's um, exp explaining the story of a designer's approach <laughs> um, that, is, uh, that is universal. It's, um, I think that's, it's, it's, it's these types of things that can make people think a bit out of the box of literally what they see, as you say, as a sort of modernist, um, relatively clinical sort of um, architecture but actually one which is based on, on thinking through absolutely everything <laughs> there is also uh, uh, and, and you know it's it's, it's interesting because uh, there are also uh, cat lovers and there is also a device for the cat and um, when, when people discover it they think oh very well would it be also possible to come with the cat uh, i show you also a, a picture of this one um just a second here so um in, in in Japan, this is we are on the roof, and when you climb, you, you go down the stairs. On the right hand side, you have this platform for the cat. It's the Belvedere for the cat, and um, this is also very famous because Le Corbusier talks about this in his book, uh, *Une petite maison*, that he wrote about Villa Le Lac in 1954, and it's so well known that even in um, in Japan, uh, the this drawing that you see on the left hand side on the left hand side has been published in a, in a magazine in Japan um, a few years ago. And again, you know, given um, you know uh, Corbusier's prominence and importance in Japan, I understand you have a lot of Japanese visitors. And um, is there anything that you've had to do um, to to really you know address that particular audience or? Um, Yes, of course. We 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 work with um, uh, interns, um, people who are studying history of art, um, and uh, for example, this summer we had um, an intern, William, who talks he talks Japanese. So this is great. He can uh, propose a tour in Japanese. Yeah. So be before that, we did it in English, and um, it, it it worked quite well, but now that we can propose a tour in Japanese, it's the little plus, a little thing that people really uh, remember. Yep. So um, the other other sort of, th of things that, again, I just noticed on the chat, um, someone has asked, um, is it because of Le Corbusier that you can actually develop your ex exhibitions or would you have so much engagement if it wasn't um, for him. <laughs> That's quite a, you know, <laughs> so I suppose it's the, the key question, but it, it's quite hard to divorce the, the building and from, from, from its author, I think. Of course, no, it's people come to see this villa because it's Le Corbusier, because it's um, the very beginning in modern architecture. Um, it's a house that has, an influence on modern architecture worldwide during the 20th century. So it's really the beginning and people come for this. Uh, if, it were, if the exhibition we propose in, at Villa Le Lac were in another place, of course we would have not as, as many people. That is absolutely, absolutely clear. 
yeah yep but it's that um but it but it's i suspect i suppose if you if you you know in terms of the the audience we have today and 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 helping you know to sort of uh, inspire them to to uh, grow their audiences grow the width of their content is there is there anything that you can maybe um talk about that sort of that, that 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 is more universal for for um perhaps small museums or or museums in small places because obviously uh villa Le lac is in a small locale mm -hmm. um that you know that will help them to to think creatively around i suppose the connection of of space place collection and publication and curation mm -hmm. I think you have, I would say, you have to listen to the place. What does the place tell you? Uh, and if you do things, if you present things that are in tune with the place, with the location, uh, this might function. Um, I give you an example. We had last year, I don't know if we have it here. I just have to check this just a second. Um, now I don't have it here. Anyway, um, <laughs> you see, uh, the exhibitions we propose at Villa Lac, um, as I told before, must be linked with Le Corbusier, Villa de Lac, or modern architecture. But also, the, what we display must, um, it, it must be an interaction with the place. Um, how could I say this? The, 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 the place should magnify what is exhibited, and what is exhibited should magnify the place. This is, for example, why we have, uh, as you can see here on the right-hand side, uh, a picture that is much bigger than the other one, because once you are in the villa, you see how this works with the with the architecture. Um, so, if you find the if if you find the the the, uh, the relation between what you propose and the place where you propose it, I think it it might work, and we are very lucky here because with Villa de Lac, it works quite well. Apologies, I was trying to sort my own lighting there. <laughs> um, but also um, moving from that idea of the place to augmenting the story um, of the place, I think what I'm seeing is, is your own essential creativity on, on, on picking up on, on different media and 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 the, the the specific history of the place, and um, to spur contemporary um, creative artists, and and I think that to me is a, is a big message that I, that I've um, taken out of, of seeing seeing your work, and um, when it comes to your own um, publications. Um, could you maybe give us a little insight into how 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 you how they just how you just state them and 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 that process? Oh, it's a it's a micro publisher, which means it's called Call Me Edouard. It's a micro publisher, which means uh, we publish one or two books a year, and uh, Switzerland has eighteen percent of its population that speaks French. So these are two um, districts of Paris. So you can imagine the, how many readers we might have. So the books uh, we, we, we we make are really books we want to do, we love to do, we think need to exist, um, and th this is how, in the end, we choose what we what we publish. For example, we here at the in this region are very lucky because um, it's the place where. Uh, famous British writer Graham Greene uh, is buried, and who he lived his last um, his last years. So we could publish this book, the Swiss chapter, 
about green here in 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 in, in Gozo in Switzerland. Then we have Charlie Chaplin, and uh, Charlie Chaplin lived for twenty five years in the Corsier. This is the village next to Gozo, and uh, we were very happy to be able to uh, publish this book, the uh, big book about his place where the, the Manoir de Bon, where he lived. And also, which is quite amazing, is this one, The Freak. This is about the last film, Chaplin's last film, that he never made. But he wrote everything. He wrote the script. He wrote the music. In fact, he was ready to shoot. He could have said, OK, tomorrow we start. But this film was never made. So it's absolutely interesting to be able to, uh, as a micro publisher, local publisher, to publish such an, a, a giant like this, the freak, because this should be Fiden or I don't know, a great, uh, 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 an amazing, great publisher, not Kormieda, which is a micro publisher. And um, this was possible because, of course, we knew, uh, we, we know people around who know the family and so on. And this little miracle was possible, thanks to all these relations. And now, of course, all the books are bilingual, French and English, or trilingual, French, English, and German. Because uh, now, thanks to the internet, we can sell books to Australia, to China, to Korea, to South America, worldwide. Of course, it's not uh, 100,000 copies. It's one there, one there, one there. So it's still a micro publisher, but we have books all around the world. Fantastic. I've got a little question coming up. Has, has anyone optioned uh, the book for a film by any chance? Uh, pardon? There is a question. Has anyone optioned uh, the book for a film? Uh, if somebody would make the film uh, of yes. this. Yes, of course. Many, many people uh, thought that uh, Tim Burton should do the movie. Uh, <laughs> but it, it will probably never... No. happen because the only one who could make a Charlie Chaplin movie is Charlie Chaplin what could be very interesting is to have a, a documentary or a, a, a near oh yeah a documentary would be better about uh, the whole the whole story but taking the script as we had here imagine we the script of this movie slept during many, many years in the archive here in Montreux because Charlie Chaplin gave it to the archive in Montreux. And it has, it, we could go to this archive and find the script and we could put it here on the, on, at the very beginning of the, of the page. Um, of course, I, I would have loved to publish the whole script, but this was unfortunately not possible. But making a movie with the freak, I think this is very, very, very tricky. <laughs> I think Chaplin has a, a, a smaller history with Scotland, as I understand it. Somebody might be able to tell me, but he used to holiday on the Murray coast, which is not so far from where I am. Um, and I suppose the bigger point that I'm taking from that is that um, it, the, the opportunities, and again, I would put the, the Scottish Highlands, particularly, and islands in that context of reaching out to those global figures who come here and who are here, um, you know, to, as, as, a, as a connection that we can actually link in um, to, to telling a bit of their story in, in, in our locale is actually really an interesting one for those those in the audience who are who are in 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 these in in, in museums or in publishing. So mm -hmm. that story, you know, thinking wider than your mm -hmm. own cultural immediate cultural um, per, per, uh, perceptions. And mm -hmm. um, again, just to follow in on, there's a question in here: um, Do the artists have an interest in your ideas? of engaging with architecture, or is it only, you know, Corbusier's name that is drawing, um, drawing people to, to, to Le Lac? No, it's both. It's, yeah. I, I think it's a mix and it would be very difficult to know what brings people to Le Lac. Uh, something, oh, now that you're a UNESCO listed building, you must have many more people. Uh, yes probably, but this is very difficult to measure because in the meantime, we had um, the um, 
attacks in Paris in 2015. So people traveled not an, didn't travel anymore. Uh, the, the, for example, we had zero visitors from Japan in 2016 because um, Jap Japanese people came very less to Europe uh, um, because of these uh, attacks. Then with the COVID, this is also another um, another factor. So it's ve very difficult to to determine. Yeah, um, and again, another one. Um... What ideas for program and activities expansion have you considered in the past and not pursued? And, and if so, why not? Oh, um, people, for example, imagine that uh, Villa de Lac is just a place uh, like a gallery where they can put their own work and sell it. Uh, but it's not a gallery, it's a museum. And then um, the, 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 the purpose of the exhibitions is to... Um, to, to let people know about Le Corbusier's work, about Villa Le Lac. This should be, a, a, I would say, a holistic um, uh, holistic experience. Um, so we, we had several people who, who came with their own uh, landscape watercolors, which are very nice, beautiful, whatever, but it's not the place for um, to, to exhibit them. For example, last year, people might say, oh, I, I've seen last year you had an exhibition of pastels with mountains. And it's the mountain that we see just from Villa Le Lac. It's called Le Gramont. And um, it's a painter that is uh, born in the middle, uh, in the beginning of the 20th century. And people might wonder, why do you expose where do you present, exhibit mountain pastel, pastels with this mountain? And in fact, we were never as much in the line with what should be done because this mountain is absolutely the magical mountain in, uh, for, for Loka with his family. When, uh, when you read the letters, you see that they, they talk about this mountain in a very particular way. Um, the father painted this mountain. Le Corbusier himself painted this mountain. And then the author, John Francis Le Coultre, we exhibited last year, comes from the same place than Le Corbusier, had the same uh, um, course. He learned the same trade in the watch uh, industry as Le Corbusier. Then they both went to Paris and they exhibited together in the Salon d'Automne in Paris in 1932. So there are many, many, many parallels that allowed us to have these paintings at Villa Le Lac. Of course, if somebody comes and tells, tells us that, that he's doing pastel as well and he is painting the Matterhorn, for example, uh, th this wouldn't be a link. This wouldn't be enough to, to, um, to be at uh, Villa Le Lac. Yep. So, um... Any of the other, um, have, have, I, have we covered some, mo most of the sort of um, points you'd like to make about, about the, the place, the exhibitions and the publications? Yes, I think what, what's important is everything is interesting from the moment you pay interest to it. Mm -hmm. If you're interested in something, it becomes interesting, of course. So ev I think every place could um, be as successful, I would say, if you go to the very core of things, if you, if you start to learn to know the people who lived there, how they lived, who they were, and so on, we discover amazing things. We, we, we are absolutely surprised to see that uh, this villa that is next to the water has no access to the lake. And this is absolutely normal because in 1923, um, parents of Le Corbusier, born in the middle of the 19th century in the Jura Mountains, they couldn't swim, of course. But Le Corbusier, who liked to swim, he's tired of swimming alone. So imagine this, he will give swimming lessons to his brother by letters. <laughs> Amazing. He, he, he writes a letter in which he explains him, he tells him, he teaches him how to swim. 
Then the mother answers to Le Corbusier and writes, you're completely mad. You shouldn't do this. Albert is already 50 years old. He's stiff like a stick. He will break into pieces. Don't give him bad ideas and so on and so on and so on. So you see, you, you little by little, by entering the very core of these people in this family, um, you can make it very, um, a, a, a place that is really alive. Mm. And, um, and visitors can enter the place much easier. And I think this works everywhere. I think this is not because it's Corbusier or La Clément or whatever, like Geneva. Um, I, I think this works or can work everywhere. I think that's what, um, you know, will, I mean, as, as an architect going to the house, I would have an entirely different um, perception from a non-architect. And these these tales of the human, um, the human experience, the life um, are the things that hopefully will draw people um, to the house for different reasons. But then hopefully um, the architecture will, will, will work in their heads too. Maybe to turn a little to talk about the space, which is not large. Um, and I just wonder if you might sort of um, reflect on the advantages and disadvantages of having such a small facility. Of course, uh, if you look at the pictures I, I show you, this is um, the 64 square meters. It's a really small if you want to exhibit something um, in, in the place. So we have to be very selective. We have to, to, to make a choice. And it's it can be really frustrating in the end because you would like to show much more um, than just these 64 square meters. But yeah, this is it. This will not change. <laughs> it, it probably means that there's a certain intimacy um, between, uh, with, between the interns and yourself who are showing people around and talking to them that you wouldn't have in a, in a bigger museum. Of course, because we are all, all the time in the in the house. It's as if they came to to people to to to, to, to a private house in the end. Uh, so what what we try to do, of course, is to to feel if people want to have information, if they want to stay on their own. Of course, no intrusion, but also uh, no questions like. Um, is, every, is everything okay? <laughs> because of course, everything is always okay. But if you, um, if you ask questions, for example, uh, like here, this small um, tap of water and the sink. And if you ask people, oh, I see that you're looking at the sink. Would you like to know why it's only 90 centimeters high? Oh, and then suddenly it's, oh, yes, tell me why it's 90 centimeters high, and so on, and so on, and so on. And th this allows to start a conversation with visitors. Is it um, an architect or um, a non-architect? What's also very interesting in this very peculiar place is the architects who come here, of course, know Le Corbusier quite well, or think they know Le Corbusier quite well. And in reality, between what has been written on this house and the reality, it's, uh, there is a world between the two things. And we are starting to discover all this. And this is also um, Le Corbusier's fault, in a way, because in 1954, he writes a book about this house. And many things in this book are absolutely not true. But many architects took this for granted and thought that, oh, yes, it must be like this, as Le Corbusier wrote it like that. But Le Corbusier didn't write something absolutely true. For example, he, in this book, he, he, he claims that he has designed the plan of the house before he knew the ground, before he knew where he would build the house. He says it three times. He, wants, he really wants to ins insist. So everybody believes it. So we have many people who come to the place and say, oh, I know the place. I've read the book. Uh, I know that Le Corbusier designed the plan before he knew the ground. But we know that it is absolutely not true. And when we can prove it, when we can show them with documents and so on, and it's nothing to discuss, it's proof is done that 
it's not true. They say, come on, I spent my whole life thinking that it was like this, like that. So it's very interesting when you have somebody who has been written and talked about so much as Le Corbusier and who in reality is quite different. Yeah, no, that's fascinating. Uh, I've got two um, questions on why is the sink only 90 <laughs> centimeters high? <laughs> It's, it was an example. Uh, I'll show you. I, I show you again the picture, um, because on the other side you have a. Um, it's in fact outside the house. I show you this just here. Um, again, voila. In fact, this is, uh, as you can see, it's outside the house. Um, the lower sink may, may be used by children as well. You never know who would. Uh, come and live in the house. And then here you have a little um, a little door that you can close. It's only halfway, it's only half of the of the height. This allows you to put a suitcase, for example, here in the um, on the under under the sink. Yeah. So it's inside the house. Yeah. Yeah, the sink is the, the sink is outside the house, in fact. I don't I don't quite follow. It looks inside. Is that yeah, it's it's not on it's not aligned on the wall. I, I put it again. Uh, oh, it's, it's actually it, it goes out with the skin of the house. Yes, yeah. you see I'm the, with it, you. It, it, when you when you close this device, it's the the, the wall is flat. Indeed, uh, and this is only because and he did he did this because we are here in the small sitting room that can be converted into a bedroom thanks to a sliding wall. So um, there. There, there was one bed, um, a, a couch that can become, uh, here it is, here you see the couch. Yes. Um, this in fact is, uh, can become a double bed because under this uh, mat mattress, you have a space 60 centimeters below the, the floor uh, for a second bed. So when you pulled it, you, you could have two, two beds and two people sleeping here. And here this, this uh, brown sliding wall is um, um, can can be closed until here to to close the space to make a, a a guest room. And what's interesting is once the guests have left, you don't have a uh, an empty room. You just open again the um, the sliding wall. You push back the bed to make a couch. You close this little. Um, um, panel to hide the, um, the the sink, the tap of water, and then you have again a small sitting room. So you have no lost space, which is of course very interesting in only sixty four square meters. Yep, and again, as a holiday home, as I understand it, um, you know, quite a lot of the family would be there and it would have that adaptability um, for all. Yeah. So um, I think- it's, it's not a, it's not a, a holiday ho home. It, it, they lived there all year. I see, apologies, right. No so problem. It's, it's they, 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 after the big house in La Chaux de Fonds, uh, yeah. they sold it and then they came here in a very smaller house, 64 square meter. What's interesting as well is uh, it's only 64 square meters, but once you're inside, you see here, this is really the genius of Le Corbusier. It's in the livability and the way how he deals with volumes and spaces, because inside the house, you have the feeling it's much bigger than 64 square meters. And if you go to the roof, um, you cannot walk on the roof, but you can see how it looks like. And you see the 64 square meters in one glance, you see how small it is. 64 square meters. And once you're inside, you see how big it can be. It's the genius of that. <laughs> um, I think, um, I suppose the, the sort of final questions um, I, I would ask are, are around um, your plans for the future. Um, obviously we've all come through some quite difficult times. We're not through them yet in terms of the pandemic. But we'd, we'd love all to know what, what's planned in order that we can, when we can, make our way by train, hopefully, <laughs> 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 to see you. <laughs> of course, you're very welcome. Um, for, so for the future, uh, we hope to be able to restore the house. Uh, to have a restoration of the, um, uh, the inside. The outside has already been restored. Now we need to do the inside. So it's a um, 
painting and uh, cracks that we have to um, um, to hide and so on. Um, of course, it's a very delicate process. We cannot just go to the hardware store, buy a, a, um, some paint and do it by ourselves. This has to be very, uh, very carefully um, according to the history of the place. Inside, we've made some stratigraphies that we've uh, scratched the walls uh, to reveal the different layers of paint. So we know exactly what are the different colors that and try to define, to find or, or, or at what time it was this or that color. So the colors you've seen inside are the original colors, which is quite amazing to think that uh, in 1924, when Le Corbusier's parents move in, they discover these colors. So this is one thing. Then the other thing, in 2023, um, this house is 100 years old. So in 2023, we prepare a major exhibition um, in, in the villa uh, with films, with picked, photos, drawings, and so on. Because we're very lucky because as um, the letters of the family are so rich, so many letters give so many information. And we have so many photos of uh, the owner from that sort of in Paris has so many beautiful photos from uh, several from different times from the 20s 30s 40s 50s and so on uh, so we can make a whole retrospective of the 100 years of the of the villa and we see how this villa evolved and uh, went through time and um, also a film because Le Corbusier bought a 16 millimeter camera and he made a film at Villa Le Lac so this of course is very interesting to to see also with the with the surroundings before the road, after the road, and so on. Yep, I've just put, I've just spotted another quite important um, question for the for the curators amongst the audience, and um, they've asked if you could talk about how you dovetail, you bring together the physical history of the house as it was lived in, and how it is now as a museum. Excuse me, I didn't understand the question. So basically, and um, how you bring together. Um, the 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 museum aspect of the house um, with um, its physical history, his, oh, uh, yeah. Of course, uh, for, for 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 the visitors, you mean how we yes. how we do this? Um, so it's by uh, we propose, um, of course, this um, interaction with the visitors, and then we have all the books we've published. Uh, we we have the books when when somebody is inside and sees the house, house you've seen. And um, we show him a picture like this, asking, do you want to see how it looked like when it was before? And was it really like this when the parents live here? What did, uh, what was the, uh, the mother occupation? What did she do? And she was a pianist. And here you can see the piano. Uh, wait, here you can see it. Here you can see the piano of, um, of the mother and so on and so on and so on. So, um, it's by all these photos, documents, music. We also have a record that the, the brother of Le Corbusier recorded at Villa Lac that we can uh, propose to visitors. So this maybe um, makes the link between the, um, the house itself and the and the museum. I don't know if I answered the question. I, I think so. I, I understand that. And there's finally a little, um, if there's any uh, photos of the kitchen and bathroom area, I don't know if you've got any of them. There was a request for that. Yes, I have to, I have to check. Um, the kitchen is very, very small. Um, but I'm afraid I don't have it here. No, I don't have it here. Um, <laughs> In, oh, wait, maybe, uh, no, 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 I don't have it here. Um, it's presumably available, is it, is there one online or is there one in publication? I have to check, uh, I don't have it by heart, but. Um, don't worry. Mm. No, unfortunately I don't, and I don't have it right. Right now, 
we can direct well, the, 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 the 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 kitchen is very is very small it's uh when people come to the villa they wonder why the kitchen is so small you have only two fires two gas yes. no oven of course yes. no fridge because you have uh in switzerland in 1923 you had no fridge um and people really wonder what what were they eating for yeah. It, it, it was their food so simple and the answer is yes mm. and and we know it again through the letters um, they have many many information and also when we when we meet these people look at this picture this is Le Corbusier's brother Albert teaching music bottles bells um to these young people here mm. so imagine these young people are 80 now <laughs> and they come back to the villa and they tell us how how they played music with albert and what in the end they were eating and so all these little elements show that indeed they did not eat many great things turkey at christmas no that wasn't um uh cooked there and it's another uh paradigm because nowadays the kitchen is the main area in your in your house you even have seats to have people watch you cooking it's completely different at that time 1923 the kitchen was like the laundry it was the far away from the place where you live. So it's completely different. And of course, 64 square meters, the main rooms are on the south side uh, with the bedroom, a little bathroom on the south, um, main living room and the small sitting room and um, that is convertible into a, a guest room. So you have to make a compromise, you have to choose. Do you accept to have such a small kitchen? Yes, indeed, because we don't need a bigger one. And uh, the laundry is then uh, next to the, to the kitchen. And the tiny toilet is also uh, um, in, this, um, in this area. But you will, you will see this if you, if you come to, to Villa Lacan. Yeah, absolutely, yes. We'll, we'll give you a, a, a special tour. That, and all our audience, <laughs> definitely. No, it's just such a you know interesting insight into changing lives, and 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 and, and as an architect, um, the you know the 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 different expectations of space, and and as you say, relationship to the lake itself. That's really fascinating. So I would just like to say thank you very much indeed. We've had a great chat I thoroughly enjoyed um, meeting you and talking and you. Uh, I you. definitely do look <laughs> look forward to coming and I would encourage everyone else most certainly to visit and I hope that you too have enjoyed um, hearing Patrick and learning of his experience and multi-talented <laughs> creativity mm -hmm. thank you very much thank indeed thank, thank you. you very much <laughs> thank you <laughs> Cheers. thanks <laughs>